Before I drained the diesel from the fuel tank, um, I decided to have another go at cleaning the carburetor in case there was any contaminants uh, left in it. There must have been. Um, so I cleared it out and there was a fair bit of sediment. Um, but, and I've been trying to run the, it off the a remote supply now, but I, I'm just not getting anywhere and uh, I'm kind of getting a bit tired of the, uh, the Verajet carburetor. Um, I'm much more familiar with the, the Solex, um, the same as the one I had on Gina. So I'm going to change it over to, to one of those. Um, I have a few spares for them as well. So I should be able to get it running on one of them. So I need to take off the, they have a different uh, inlet manifold to fit them. So I have to strip it back as far as that and swap it over. Thanks for everybody's uh, suggestions on uh, solutions. Um, I have been running it on a new um, uh, coil pack and I've also been through all the plugs and cleaned them and I've tested them for spark and everything and I'm pretty confident in this. Um, it's only about a, a year or two old uh, distributor and it hasn't even been on a car that long. So um, hopefully we're getting close to getting Moby up and running. I removed the lower uh, radiator hose um, and drained some coolant. I uh, need to get it below the level of the the uh, inlet manifold so that I don't get um, loads of uh, coolant coming out around the, the inlet ports when I uh, disconnect the manifold. To give myself a bit of space uh, working behind the manifold, I'm going to uh, loosen off the alternator just push it back out of the way a bit. Actually disconnect the battery as well, it's probably not a bad idea. And I'll be working around behind near the terminals at the back of the alternator there. I'll disconnect this uh, throttle linkage. Vacuum pipe. Brake vacuum hose. That's the uh, stop solenoid. Temperature gauge. Fuel inlet pipe. So what we got around the back? Oh. Let you disconnect. There's a there's a big water. Um, pipe that brings water right round from the radiator back to the pump um, but it's actually disconnected on this but they're often connected to the back of the manifold. Got two water pipes um, that warm the carburetor here. Incidentally I was asked on YouTube um, how do you adjust the idle on these carburetors. That's the idle screw there and below it is the, the mixture screw. So if it is working um, you can adjust the, the idle um, by turning that in and out. Um, they, all the books say don't touch the, uh, the mixture screw unless you've got the equipment for uh, analysing the exhaust gases. Now I'll start to loosen the inlet manifold nuts and bolts. Nice, 
small ratchet is the best way to get in here. I've tried this with big ones over the years and it's been a pain. Tough job on the knees. Bent backwards at the moment. Down on the belly. Must be getting old if I'm complaining about my knees. Yeah, cat, you can hear. I think the cat hears me moaning as well. He wants to join in. This is one I know to be working. A little Solex carburetor, very simple. I like the little one for tightening these as well because you don't tend to go too tight then. Okay, this uh, vacuum pipe doesn't fit on very tight so I'll use the one from the other car. Now, a little bit of a problem here. This carburetor came off a right hand drive cadet and Moby, as you know, it's a German left-hand drive. Funny enough, the brackets I'm using on here, that looks like I could probably turn it around and use it on the other side. There's actually, the manifold looks definitely like it was made for both. I think I have to take this off and position it like this. I change over to the Solex throttle cable and looks like I should be able to make something work over this side or maybe I'll have to turn this bracket around uh, and modify it so that it can pull the, the pedal is obviously here on this car and it would have been on this side coming into it that way um, on the right hand drive so a little bit of engineering to do maybe at least this uh, radiator hose fits straight on as does the vacuum pipe to the brakes. The water cooling, there is a cool in, well it's not, that's the air. Yeah, there isn't cooling on this carburetor, so I'll have to join those two pipes together. get used to working on a left hand drive can I? Just disconnecting the throttle pedal here. There we go. Awkward. Watch off.
take this spring off the back. This is the spring you feel when you press the throttle cable, the, the accelerator pedal. So the cable went this way down and around. What I want to do is take this off, turn it over this way so that the cable can pull it from over here, this way. Don't know how many positions this can take. Two really. Eek. Up and over. It looks okay. So I've flipped over now. Figure out where this needs to be. Put on the pedal inside as well. I think I'll actually get away with just turning the bracket upside down. Uh, and it should just fit on there like that. Excellent. For some reason this car had a choke cable already and it's a nice long one. It looks like I might be able to get it around there. I'm going to go under this. So even though we had an automatic choke, it has the manual cable there. Uh, it wasn't a very original setup that was on this car in the first place. Oh, manual choke. Change over this fuel hose as well. Can trim these later. Make get everything working. I've put the coolant back in. And temperature sensor connection. No solenoid on this. It's been removed. Putting the spring on again, it still works with everything this way. So let's return it nicely to the closed position. Connect up this radiator hose again. Okay, I have a fresh fuel supply. Um, I've topped up with coolant, connect the battery, find the key and see what happens. <laughs> no battery light because I never connected the alternator. I had to head away and leave that yesterday, but I was um, happy enough that we were getting uh, closer. Um, we'll try a few more positions now with the distributor and uh, see if that helps.
Not perfect, but we're nearly there. 